balance sheet and profit and loss management. Also referred to as statement of financial position or condition, balance sheets reports on a company's assets, liabilities and ownership equity at a given point in time. Before preparing the balance sheet, profit and loss accounts are also prepared for the financial year. From the bank's point of view, study of balance sheet for at least three years is very important if the banker is inclined to sanction any loan facility to the business concern. In this lesson, we are going to study the nuances of balance sheet and profit and loss management in banks. It follows from the previous slide that after studying this lesson, you should be able to understand the different risks associated with banks, know the treatment of various items for financial analysis, understand the components of balance sheet and profit and loss account, define the asset liability management process, the amount of term loan installments payable within the next 12 months are not to be treated as current liabilities except those which are overdue and have not been rescheduled while computing maximum permissible bank finance and the same need not to be taken into account while computing NWC. It is further advised that for calculating current ratio term loan installments payable within the next 12 months except those which are overdue and have not been rescheduled should not be treated as current liabilities. RBI advised banks that the duty benefit arising out of unutilized advance licenses should not be treated as an item of current assets. For calculating MPBF, the amount of export receivables may be excluded from the current assets as need-based limits for export receivables could be sanctioned and in respect of such receivables, borrowers are not required to bring in 25% by the way of networking capital. Where an exporter so desires, export receivables may be included in the total current assets for arriving at MPBF, but the minimum stipulated NWC may be reckoned after excluding the quantum of export receivables from the total current assets for fixing up the post-shipment credit limit. RBI had observed that banks do not follow uniform practice or procedure for treatment of margin money received by them on account of letter of credit or bank guarantee. It was further informed by RBI that some banks treat such margin money as part of current assets as a result of which banks provide credit to their borrowers against such margin money. RBI had advised that banks should exclude margin money from the projected build-up of current assets while assessing working capital credit needs of the borrower. According to RBI, it is advisable to ensure that as far as possible, on account of investments made in associate, allied, subsidiary concerns and intercorporate deposits, the current ratio should not slip below the stipulated level. Preference shares redeemable within one year are to be treated as current liabilities. However, preference shares redeemable after one year are treated as term liabilities. It is advised that flexibility may be provided in the system of netting sundry creditors from the value of stocks for allowing drawing power after providing for stipulated margin. Banks' existing instructions permit flexibility of approach in accepting inventory norms while assessing working capital requirements of the borrower. These, however, do not provide any flexibility to the branches in the levels of different items of inventories vis-à-vis -vis those accepted at the time of assessment of MPBF while assessing value of inventories for calculating drawing power. Now let us understand the key parameters of the credit rating of loan account. Current ratio measures the proportion of a party's current assets to its current liabilities and thus gives a measure of the short-term liquidity. The way to measure and how to rate are written on the right-hand column.
DSCR measures the number of times a party's cash profits covers its repayment obligations over a period of one year. This ratio is a good indicator of the long-term solvency of a party and its ability to service its debt obligations. The way to measure and how to rate are written on the right-hand column. Estimated cash profit of current year to net repayment obligation of current year has been designed to determine future cash flow adequacy of the party to meet its repayment obligation during the current year. The way to measure and factors to be considered are written on the right hand column. Inventory and debtors holding ratio indicates number of times the inventory and debtors are recycled to generate sales and hence measures the operating efficiency in management of working capital. This parameter is a key indicator for assessing the efficiency in managing the level of inventories and receivables at an optimum level. The way to measure and how to rate are written on the right hand column. Return on capital employed ratio measures the income earned per unit of capital employed in the business. The main purpose of any business is to earn profits and maximize the returns from capital invested. The way to measure and how to rate are written on the right hand column. The interest coverage ratio is a measure of the number of times a company could make the interest payments on its debt with its earnings before interest and taxes also known as EBIT. The lower the interest coverage ratio, the higher the company's debt burden and the greater the possibility of bankruptcy or default. The way to measure is written on the right hand column. Total outside liabilities or tangible net worth ratio measures the total outside liabilities as a proportion of the tangible net worth. This ratio is a measure of the extent to which outside funds are invested in the business compared to capital provided by the promoters or shareholders or profits flowed back into the business. Lower the ratio, greater is the long term stability of the party and the margin of safety for the creditors. The way to measure and how to rate are written on the right hand column. The components of a bank balance sheet includes banks liabilities and assets. While the liabilities include capital reserve and surplus, deposits, borrowings etc. assets comprise of cash and balances with RBI, BAL. With banks and money at call and short notices, investments, advances, fixed assets, etc. The components of a bank's profit and loss account include income and expenses. While income includes interest income and other income, expenses include interest expended, operating expenses and provisions and contingencies. An effective asset liability management technique aims to manage the volume, mix, maturity, rate sensitivity, quality and liquidity of assets and liabilities as a whole so as to attain a predetermined acceptable risk or reward ration. It is aimed to stabilize short term profits, long term earnings and long term substance of the bank. Asset Liability Management or ALM represents a genuine means of adding value to private banking that has not been sufficiently explored to date. Within the framework of private financial management offerings, personal wealth managers tend to confine their clients to mandates that are only differentiated through their level of volatility without the client's personal wealth constraints and objectives being genuinely taken into account in order to determine the overall strategic asset allocation. 
the ALM function undertakes liquidity risk management, management of market risks, funding and capital planning, profit planning and growth projection, trading risk management and exchange risk. Measuring and managing liquidity needs are vital activities of commercial banks. By assuring a bank's ability to meet its liabilities as they become due, liquidity management can reduce the probability of an adverse situation developing. Floating exchange rate arrangement has brought in its way pronounced volatility, adding a new dimension to the risk profile of banks' balance sheets. Managing currency risk is one more dimension of asset liability management. Mismatched currency position besides exposing the balance sheet to movements in exchange rate also exposes it to country risk and settlement risk. The phased deregulation of interest rates and the operational flexibility given to banks in pricing most of the assets and liabilities have exposed the banking system to interest rate risk. It is the intention of RBI to move over to modern techniques of interest rate risk measurement like duration gap analysis, simulation and value at risk at later date when banks acquire sufficient expertise and sophistication in MIS. Adequate board and management supervision is essential for good risk management and corporate governance. An asset or liability committee provides important management information systems to effectively evaluate on and off balance sheet risk for an entire institute. Now let us check if we have understood the various concepts discussed in this lesson clearly. The components of a bank's profit and loss account include liabilities and assets. Right and wrong. Wrong. The components of a bank's balance sheet account include income and expenses. Right or wrong? Wrong. Preference shares redeemable within one year are to be treated as current liabilities. Right or wrong? Right. Before we end, let us briefly revise what we have studied till so far. It is important to note that the conglomerate approach to financial institutions, which is increasingly becoming popular in the developed markets, could also get replicated in Indian situations. This implies that the distinction between commercial banks and term lending institutions could become blurred. It is also possible that the same institution involves itself in short-term and long-term lending borrowing activities as well as other activities like mutual funds, insurance and pension funds. In such a situation, the strategy for asset liability management becomes more challenging because one has to adopt a modular approach in terms of meeting asset liability management requirements of different divisions and product lines but it also provides opportunities for diversification across activities that could facilitate risk management on an enhanced footing. In other words, in the Indian context, the challenge could arise from, say, the merger of SBI, IDBI and LIC.